What's up, guys, and welcome to Movie Importance Flashback Reviews, where I take movies from the past, break them down, and tell you what I think about them. If you like what you see, of course, hit the subscribe button, join Movie Importance, hit the notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next. Of course, comment below on any video that you watch on my channel. So, it's been 20 years since The Insider came out. It's still an amazing movie. I just watched it, and it's still tense, it's still beautiful. It's still dark, it's still complicated, it's still amazing, but man, it's still prescient in today's society with the whole cover-ups and the ideas of big government, you know, doing stuff disgusting behind the scenes and just being corporate greedy. It's kind of like what the video game industry is doing right now with like loot boxes and stuff like that. It's all about corporate greed and all about not taking the responsibility. And The Insider is in this group of movies called conspiracy theory movies or corporate greed movies or group of corporate conspiracy movies, kind of like Aaron Brockovich, a civil action. Uh, there's a new movie called Dark Waters where Mark Ruffalo is coming out. It's about chemical problems. And the idea behind the story is we have a guy who's played by Russell Crowe. Uh, who plays Jeff uh, Jeff Wigan, and Jeff Wigan was a CEO or a executive of this company called Brown and Williamson, and Brown and Williamson was a, you know, a major company in the chemical slash uh, cigarette world, and they hid the main people, the main CEOs, and the owners, and blah blah blah, hid the fact that the were using chemicals and ammonium and causing more stimulation, more cancer, faster ways of people dying. But they were able to get people more addicted to, you know, create more effects in the brain and give people the ability to smoke more money, smoke more cigarettes so they make more money. It's all about corporate greed as we, you know, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Well, in the process of all this stuff going on, after the Jeff Wigand has been fired, after he's been given supplemental packages as long as he signs confidentiality agreements, we get the other side of the spectrum. We get the 60 minutes side where we learn about these characters including Mike Wallace, who's played by Christopher Plummer, who was an amazing news reporter. And we get the producer, Lowell Bergman, who is, of course, played by Al Pacino in this movie. And Lowell Bergman is on a story about a fire safety hazard with whatever. I can't remember exactly what it was, but he basically gets wind of this story through different sources and different contacts. Um, the story he's learning about the fire safety or whatever it is, he gets in contact with Jeffrey Wigand. And in the process the story of the fire safety kind of goes out the window. I'm sure they reported on it, but he catches wind of everything that basically had happened to Jeffrey Wigand and what Jeffrey Wigand was doing and why he didn't believe in what he was doing. And not only does it become a bigger story, but it could become a life changing story for many people, for thousands upon millions of people who do smoke. And what is 60 minutes going to do? They have to report on this story. Lowell Bergman, this is like a, you know, uh, an award-winning story that he's going to find a way to get up on 60 Minutes. And the way this story plays out, the ways that they have to jump through hoops, the scary nature of big government or a big uh, corporate greed, the ideas that corporations will go to whatever lengths they can to scare a person into not talking is insane. This movie is insane. The ideas behind this movie is insane. It's so disturbing to watch, so scary, so mesmerizing that you just can't believe that corporate greed can go this far, that they're willing to let people die to get to get money. You know, this is the same thing that's been going on for years and years and years and decades. And it just keeps repeating itself. You know, these corporations get big and then they get greedy and then, you know, people die because of it. It's really, really sad. But the main problem is Jeffrey Wigand signed that confidentiality agreement. And, you know, uh, Michael Gammon, who plays the CEO of Brown and Williamson in this movie, he basically adds more stipulations to the point where if he even says anything, his whole family loses everything. They lose, their, you know, medical, dental lose the supplemental packages that they're going to get. But Jeffrey Wigand, he wants to let people know he really, because he has children and he doesn't want to see his children have, you know, effects of, you know, out, you know, cigarette smoke, you know, one of them has asthma problems and to see what his family goes through, to see what his wife and kids go through, the fact that what this corporation is doing, they're, they're putting little bullets in mailboxes or they're given like death threats on computers and just to see everything that is happening is so sad and so depressing for a guy that's basically being a whistleblower and it's such a sad nature of a guy that's trying to do the right thing there is so many movies out there of people or so many real life segments you know there's a whistleblower today in the current state of the economy 
and he is getting torn down. People are threatening him, you know, or threatening him or her, whoever it is. And it's just like, why is it, what is so bad about this economy that we have to like ruin so many people's lives to basically make money? It's, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. It's so depressing to watch, but in this story, it's just, the focus and the nature of what cigarette tobacco, big company tobacco has done, it's thank God that Jeffrey Wigand was one of the people willing to speak up because most of us won't. Most of us are too scared to. Even myself, I, you know, I probably was jump ship too and, you know, hide behind a curtain or whatever, like the Wizard of Oz or something. But, I, you know, there's so many great performances in here outside of Russell Crowe, who should have gotten the Oscar win for this role. And thank God he got it for the next year for Gladiator, which I'll talk about next year when that hits the 20 year anniversary. But Al Pacino is fantastic. You know, Christopher Plummer as Mike Wallace is amazing. Um, I heard, on, I can't remember which podcast I heard it on, but he should have gotten an Oscar nomination, you know, Debbie Mazar is uh, Lil Bergman or Al Pacino's assistant. We got Bruce McGill, Kung Fiore, who play the uh, lawyers who are trying to subpoena, you know, um, Jeffrey Wigand's testimony to get it out in there into the record, into the wild. And, you know, you have other characters. You have Stephen Tobolowsky in this. You just have so many just like fantastic character moments, you know, when this story is playing out and when you get to like the moments in nature of how it's playing out and what it's doing, the pieces that are playing, you know, it goes from, you know, Jeffrey Wigand being scared to the point where he's going to testify to his wife just like breaking down and just can't deal with it anymore just to see the nature of how Jeffrey Wigand just kind of you know, whether it's 100% true or not, you know, it's a movie, so it's not always 100% true, just to see the breakdown of everything that happens to him, the fact that CBS got so scared by the lawsuits that they put a alternate version of the Jeffrey Wigand interview from 60 Minutes without Jeffrey Wigand at all is very, very sad and depressing. To the fact that, you know, Lil Bergman just couldn't handle it anymore and he quit, to the fact that he basically spilled to the New York Times, the fact of the ideas of this what is going to happen and why how cbs and you know 60 minutes cave to big tobacco to the fact that mike wallace who's one of the most renowned reporters basically just broke down and almost and went for it and agreed with you know cbs and then turned around and finally did the right thing you know this movie's all about doing the right thing and not letting the corporate do their thing in the process but but it's it's an like I said it's an amazing movie. There are so many great moments. Um, it is a long movie. It is two hours and thirty seven minutes, which I completely forgot. But that's Michael Mann for you. Michael Mann's known for doing his long, long movies. And you look at he or look at the Last of the Mohicans. He's a guy that is very interesting as a director. He has a specific taste. He has a way of doing things. You can always tell it's a Michael Mann film just by the colors, the blues, by the handheld cameras by the up close nature of everything, the way he shoots, the way, you know, his cinematographer works, the fact of his music, the fact that you can really feel the nature of the, the human being side of everything. Um, it's not the most perfect movie in the world because it does drag a lot of times, but just to see the performances and how they act, how they work is just, it's a fantastic film and a great look into a problem that in you know, American society. And one more thing kind of amazing is how Michael Mann was able to kind of recapture what was going on at the time, you know, with the Unabomber. And if you actually watch footage of Jeffrey Wigand's interview with 60 Minutes, it's pretty spot on. So, you know, the attention to detail, the attention to character moments, the attention to ticks between uh, Lil Bergman and uh, Jeffrey Wigand and Mike Wallace. You know, the very beginning of this movie, we he goes, uh, Al Pacino's character, Joe, uh, Lil Bergman, goes to another country and talks to the Sheik, which is a very important interview uh, with Mike Wallace. And it's those types of things that really kind of make this film real. And it's amazing that, like I said, this movie didn't get more love, but it was in a year that American Beauty came out. But like I said, I would have definitely given Russell Crowe an Oscar win for this. I would have definitely given Christopher Plummer an Oscar nomination. Um, it's kind of hard to ta think if this should have gotten best picture, but in essence, it was a good year for movies. American Beauty is actually a good movie, you know, warts and all with Kevin Spacey, but overall, it's a fantastic movie. It does a lot with its two hours and 37 minutes. It has some really great performances. People show up that are in just small bit parts. And I just, I love it for that. I love the ideas and, you know, the fact that we're getting a real true to life story of some characters, two, especially two characters 
who are put through the ringer for doing what they think is honest and the people that are trying to stop them in the despicable act of nature. And like I said, I highly recommend to watch this movie just on the nature of what happened because you may not know, you know, there's a lot of young people on here who may not know what happened in 1996 with the big tobacco companies. I mean, a lot of things changed after that moment of Jeffrey Wigand's uh, commentary and, you know, comments and stuff like that. And it's also funny to see at the very end of the movie, I'll just leave with this, to watch when the Unabomber stuff happens. That 60 Minutes interview, not only did it change everything, but you can also see that 60 Minutes just kind of goes on to the next thing, goes on to the next story. That story's done and over with. So what's next? What story leads? And I thought that that's always a fascinating thing with uh, news in general. It's just what is the next story and how is that going to impact our ratings? So so that'll do it. Happy 20th anniversary, Insider. Uh, comment below. Tell me what you think of the Insider if you've seen it. But otherwise, hit the subscribe button. Join Movie Emporium. Hit the notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next. And of course, comment below on any video that you watch on my channel. But otherwise, we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out. What's up guys? Thank you so much for checking out Movie Emporium. I really appreciate it. If you want to, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button and the bell at the top. Find out what's coming next for Movie Emporium. Also, check out these two videos. They're amazing. I think they're awesome. I think you'll enjoy them too. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time.